you will hear a conversation between two flatmates, Craig and Don, who are looking for a third person to share their flat. First, you have some time to look at questions one to five. In the exam, you would have 25 seconds to look at the questions. You will see that there is an example which has been done for you. On this occasion only, the conversation relating to this will be played first. Hi, Craig. Been home long? Yeah, quite a time. Did anyone phone about renting the spare room? Yeah, we've had three phone calls about it. Really? Yeah. Do you want to hear about them? Sure. Right. The first one was called Phil Parrot. The name of the first person who phoned was Phil Parrot. So Parrot has been written in the space. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen, because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions one to five. Hi, Craig. Been home long? Yeah, quite a time. Did anyone phone about renting the spare room? Yeah, we've had three phone calls about it. Really? Yeah. Do you want to hear about them? Sure. Right. The first one was called Phil Parrot. Uh huh. He's a teacher. He's just qualified, and he teaches sports. Okay. Actually, I'm not sure about him. He certainly sounded energetic, but he asked lots of questions about whether we smoked and what sort of food we cooked. Yeah, I mean we don't exactly live on pizza and chips and takeaways. Well, not quite, but. But he might be a bit too health conscious to really fit in with the sort of life we lead. Yeah, and he asked a lot of questions about the room. He said he needs a big room because he's got lots of sports equipment. Well, th that's okay. The room's quite big, but I'm not so sure about him. What about the second one? He was called David Spencer. Spender? No, Spencer. C E R. He works at Cooper Long. You know, the big company on Broad Street. He said he was a lawyer. Oh. I'd have thought in that case he'd be earning enough to rent his own place. I wonder why he wants to share a flat. Well, he didn't say. He's quite a bit older than us. He did say he's just moved down here from the north of England. He seemed very quiet, actually. Maybe he wants to meet some new people. I got the impression he was a hard-working kind of person who doesn't go out all that much. Right. But he sounded okay. Oh, one thing though. He said he wouldn't be staying in the flat at the weekends, so he wants to pay reduced costs for gas and electricity, because he's only here five days out of seven. Oh, I'm not sure about that. What do you think? Well, I suppose it's fair, but it all sounds a bit complicated. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions six to ten. In the exam, you would have twenty-five seconds to look at the questions. Pause the recording for twenty-five seconds now. Now listen and answer question six to ten. Anyway, there was a third person, Leo Norris. Yes, he's an engineer. Oh yeah, and he's about our age. Right. What did he sound like? Well, actually, he was really funny. I couldn't stop laughing when I was talking to him. He said he was very lazy and never got up until noon at weekends. And I said that wouldn't be a problem here. <laughs> no, certainly not. But actually, I suspect he was joking when he said he was lazy. I think he lives life as it comes. He's certainly not competitive or stressed, but he likes cycling and things like that. He sounds like an outdoor type. Anyway. I thought he sounded as if he'd fit in. He wanted to check if there was somewhere safe for his bicycle. That's not a problem. No, he can leave it in the garage with my car. So did you get his contact details? Yes, he left his mobile number. It's O, triple seven, six eight seven, two four double three. And does he want to move in straight away? Well. He's paid his rent in his present place up to the thirty-first of September, but he said that if possible, he'd like to move in a bit before then. He said the twenty-eighth of September. 
And he was okay about the rent? Yeah, he said it was fine. Right. So shall we give him a ring and see if he wants to come round and... Now turn to Section 2. Section 2. You will hear a member of the Active Outdoor Club talking to a group of interested potential members. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 14. Listen carefully and answer questions 11 to 14. I'd like to welcome you all to our Active Outdoor Club. I'll start by telling you a little bit about the history of the club and all that it can offer. And there will be a chance for you to ask questions over tea and coffee in the lobby afterwards. You'll also be able to pick up pamphlets from the table at the back of the hall. And if you wish to purchase any of our products, Bill will serve you at the front counter. As most of you probably know, the club was founded by Nick Noble about 30 years ago. He thought of placing an advertisement in the local newspaper or erecting a billboard somewhere. But it was the radio that he decided on to reach the most people. You know, other people who might be interested in outdoor pursuits. Just basic activities like walking or tramping. Anything active that could take place in some of the beautiful outdoor settings that this country has to offer. Nick was overwhelmed by the response he got, and the club soon grew from a dozen or so friends and enthusiasts to around 200 members 20 years ago. And steadily since then, to reach a membership of over 2,500 now. You don't have to be a hardened athlete or extreme adventurer. On the contrary, it's a group that encourages friendship and fellowship through social and recreational activities. The club tries to cater for all levels of maturity and both genders. In fact, anyone who has the physical ability and a moderate level of health and fitness to participate in open-air activity on a regular basis. I think our youngest member is a five-year-old boy and our oldest member is a 75-year-old man. Of course, we have more challenging opportunities for those who are up to it, but all excursions are graded according to level of difficulty, and there will always be something for those families with small children. More about that later. I'm sure you realise that it's part of the focus of the club to ensure that our natural environment is kept as pristine as possible. We all have a keen interest in conservation, and many of our members contribute their time or give a monetary donation to organisations that work to enhance and beautify our natural heritage. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 15 to 20. Now listen and answer questions 15 to 20. OK, now going back to the grades of activity, first of all, tramping. This is very popular with singles and couples without children, but is certainly not restricted to those groups. Tramping is arranged for Tuesdays and Saturdays throughout the year. Most tramps are of a duration of three to five hours, depending on the weather and the terrain, and of course the time of year. You would need to check the newsletter or the website to find out place and time, and if you wish to participate, phone the coordinator who can give you more information. I'll move on now to walking, which is very popular with families, but open to everyone, and walks are arranged for every Thursday and every Sunday over the course of the entire year. Walks last no more than three hours, although the Thursday walks might be shorter. And again, you would have to check the newsletter for details of the time and area to meet and get in touch with the walking organiser to confirm your participation. Now, the Wanderers are what you might call a subgroup of the Active Outdoor Club. This group was set up to cater for the less active, more elderly, or families with very young children who still want to enjoy the great outdoors, but without quite so much exertion. 
Bear in mind that the length of these activities is variable, but we're always home before dark. Any member of the club is welcome to join in their activities on a Sunday, which include visiting some of our more beautiful parks and botanical gardens, beach walks, picnics, and even boat trips to visit some of the small islands off the coast. Often, guided tours can be arranged if there is enough interest. If you'd like to see what the wanderers are up to, check the website and then phone the leader for more information. I'll bet you're all ready for that cup of tea now. But before I finish, I really must mention something that can be a lot of fun: a great opportunity to form new or strengthen existing friendships, and a chance to explore a part of the country. That you may never have seen before. These are our mystery weekends. The committee puts a lot of time and effort into the organisation of these weekends away, not only for health and safety reasons, but also to ensure that everything runs smoothly and everyone has a good time. There will be a charge to cover travel and accommodation costs, but apart from that, it's an affordable and exciting weekend away from the city. For more information, call the chairman of the committee. You'll find his phone number in the newsletter. So that's all I have to say at this point. Please enjoy the refreshments, chat with the others, and feel free to ask questions. All the committee members are wearing large red name badges, so they're easy to find. That is the end of section two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Section three. You will hear a tutor and some students talking about an assignment. Listen carefully and answer questions twenty-one to twenty-six. Come in. Sit down. Good to see you. Hello. Hello. Now this assignment. The best thing we can do, I think, is to think how we can approach it. The main point is to investigate television, but not what's happened in the past. I was thinking that it would be necessary to go over the new media first,、mm. and then... yes, that's a way to make a start. But you need to do that quite briefly. But it's quite a complex topic. That... Yeah, I agree. But the emphasis must be on the future development of television as a cultural phenomenon. Yes. I've been reading the talk by Ashley Highfield. All right, and what do you take from that? What are the things that are competing with television? Well, to start with, there is the games console, then there is the personal computer and the internet.、Um, then again, the mobile phone with its capability of games and puzzles,、mm. um, and of course, internet access. Lastly, there is the iPod with the possibility of listening to music wherever you go. Good, you've understood that. Now. Which of these presents the greatest competition for television? Well, according to the research, it's video games. Yes, that's true at present. But in the future, I think the phone will present the greatest threat then. And why? Because it's mobile, portable, and it's developing fast. Yeah, I think you're right. You need always to look to the future and try to assess how things will develop, as we said. Good. Now you need to move on to the new social trends in connection with television. Is one of them the idea that programs might become shorter and shorter? Ah, yes. The, the average program might be ten minutes, or even less. Just mini programs, say four to five minutes long. Now, do you think you can get access to all the materials you need? The problem at the moment is the library. Oh yes, what's happening there? There's a tremendous amount of noise because of the new extension they are building. It's quite impossible to work there. They are stopping work for a week next week, I believe, and then all the sections will be open. There's a hold-up because some roof tiles have not arrived, so there'll be peace for that week. But then after that, the media studies section will be closed for a week, and all the noise and dirt will start up again. Yes, the sociology section will be open, and there's some good stuff there for you on this topic, and it's further away from the noise.、Mm. Yes, I don't think the sociology section is affected at all, and neither is the journal section. No, 
Obviously, they're rotating the closures, and it was sociology's turn to close for a week last term. I think we should make a complaint. Yes, I think you should. I've had a word with the library staff. They are very sympathetic, but well, they are affected by these works just as we are. If I were you, I'd make a complaint directly to the premises committee. They only meet once a year, but in fact, I know they're having a meeting next Tuesday. You might like to make contact with them, but don't say that I suggested this. <laughs> yes, but. The students' union might be better since they are independent of the university. That's true, but I can't imagine that people haven't already approached them about this.、Mm. Let's try the premises committee. Good idea. Why not? Okay. Now, don't forget, I need a copy of your dissertations by email and two copies in print. That is on paper. If you give the reprographics office twenty-four hours' notice, they'll make copies for you. And if you give them my details, they'll send those copies directly to me. They won't send copies to you, so you'll need to take your own copy personally from them. Good. Any questions? Now answer questions twenty-seven to thirty. One little thing was just that I wondered whether we should actually talk about that famous website. You know the one, YouTube. Ah, I was rather hoping you hadn't overlooked that. <sighs> Good point. It's mostly homemade videos. I suppose you could say that each video is a television version of a podcast. Anything else? Yes, I've got a question. I'm afraid, I'm not completely clear about the exact meaning of culture as we are using it in this subject. Well, Mrs. Jones is giving a lecture on culture and society in the University Theatre. It's on Wednesday at 10 a.m., and you can learn all about it there. I'm sure. Can you give us that again, please? Yes, that's culture and society. It's in the University Theatre, and、um, let me just check the time. Yes, here it is, 10 a.m. on Wednesday. She'll be giving a very thorough discussion of the issues in defining what culture means. Right. That's good. The thing is, the reading list confused me a bit. One thing that occurred to me was that it might be broken down into subsections for future students. Yes, that's a fair point. I'll bear that in mind. Now, don't forget, you need to do the reading and finish the assignment by the fourth of July. Is that okay? Fine. Thank you very much. Now turn to section four. Section four. You will hear an extract from an introductory talk given to a group of students who have just entered a university residential college. The speaker is the principal of the college. Listen to what the speaker says, and answer questions thirty-one to thirty-seven. First, you have some time to look at questions thirty-one to thirty-seven. Now listen carefully, and answer questions thirty-one to thirty-seven. Good morning, and welcome to Scholastic House. I am delighted to see you here. It is my duty to explain to you some of the history of our college and some of the traditions which I hope you will uphold. The idea for Scholastic House was expounded by Samuel Wells in eighteen ninety-eight. Wells was a visionary. Whose ideas were well ahead of his time, he wanted a college which would encourage friendship between people of different races and nationalities. Wells died in 1900 before he could see the college in action. Scholastic House finally began operating in 1903 with ten students. Those students came from Asia, Europe, and the Americas. At that time, Scholastic House accepted only male students. Although it has been co-educational since 1963, nine of these foundation students went on to lead illustrious lives. The only exception died tragically on his way home from Scholastic House to Sarawak. He had only recently graduated with an honours degree in law, and he was robbed of a brilliant future. The other nine students, as I said, led very fulfilling lives. Three became political leaders. Three became doctors. Perhaps the most famous graduate became a university teacher, and was responsible for the introduction of modern teaching training methods in his country. Two of the original group became senior engineers, 
and went on to deeply influence the way the water systems of their country were exploited. The college ran into hard times during the period of the Great War, 1914 to 1918, when the charter of the college was interpreted to mean that neither students nor staff could take part in the war effort. Many people felt that this indicated a lack of national spirit, and the walls of the college were frequently marked with graffiti. Meantime, outside the college, tens of thousands of young men went away to fight in Europe, never to return. The college was building a reputation for learning and for tolerance of opposing views. Scholastic House debate and discussion nights were open to the public in 1927 and have been available to anyone who wishes to attend ever since. It is a proud tradition of the college that any view may be expressed, provided that it can be defended intellectually. Over the years, topics which were controversial at the time have been discussed and debated. Now look at questions 38 to 40. As I said, the College has a proud history of publicly examining controversial issues. Why should we do this? The publicity we receive is often sensational, and there is no joy in encouraging argument for its own sake. In fact, that sort of discussion just increases tension. The only legitimate reason for our behaviour is that it casts light upon the topic in question and informs the debate. And controversial topics are the ones which most need informed attention. As the world forges ahead, we often find our scientists have outstripped our philosophers. We frequently develop scientific marvels without realising their full implications. Nowhere is this more obvious than in medicine. We are now able to keep people alive far longer than before. But this medical ability must be measured in relation to the quality of those lives. I urge you to spend your time at Scholastic House wisely. You are the heirs of an excellent academic tradition of which we can all be justly proud. It is your responsibility to continue this tradition of querying where our world is going. Progress is not always upwards. I wish you every joy in your time here, and I hope that I will hear much well-informed debate from you. That is the end of Section 4. Now you have some time to check your answers.